Welcome to Cooking with Adam Spicer. What are you making today? Well, today we have the, um, what do we have? We have the cotta le bouff. We have the cotta le bouff. Which is the um, ribeye cut of the steak, as you can see here. Look at that, approximately the size of my hand. Cost about mm, 18 pounds from Waitrose. He has a really small hand. Okay. <laughs> and we are back from a break with um, cooking with the spices. So, now that the steak's all lubed up nicely, we need to season. Now, put plenty of pepper on this. Currently in summer. On that side. Plenty of it. And this here is coarse ground black pepper. Alright. What does that mean? Well, it just means it's ground coarsely. It's quite big chunks rather than <laughs> fine pepper. Okay. So that's one side, and then we'll do the other side. Again, nice amount of pepper. Because the pepper helps bring out the flavors. All right, and it helps darken the outside of the steak. Beautiful. Okay, so plenty of pepper on there. Plenty of pepper. I'm and gonna sneeze. What we use is <laughs> Anglesey sea salt. Okay, again, plenty of this bad boy. It's just gonna bring all the flavours out of the steak. Plenty of this. That's salt day. <laughs> Alright, that's one side. Boom. Again, you can go overboard with salt and pepper, but it's very difficult. Oh, that's a lot of salt and pepper. Just a little bit more, just to finish it off. Perfect. Now, you shouldn't cook your steak for at least fifteen minutes after taking out of the taking out of the fridge. But with a steak that size as well, we're probably going to leave it about half an hour. Okay. But because this has already been out of the, are you okay? What are you laughing at? Carry on. But because this has already been out of, the, uh, out of the fridge for about 20 minutes to half hour anyway, we're just going to crack on. So then what we do... Like cracking an egg. Is we grab our scissors. <laughs> oh, we need this knife as well. Where's our Just, scissors? i do a close-up of the knife. Where's mm -hmm. our scissors? I don't know. Okay, so what we do, we go out to the beer garden. <laughs> and we cut our scissors. Out to the beer garden? Can I stop it for a minute? Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh. So here we have our herb garden, and we've got to find ourselves a nice tender. This is very David Attenborough. Rosemary stems. Okay, we just get two, about that sort of size. Okay, can you see that? Nice. <laughs> okay. All right, so, now that the steak's all prepared, what we've got to do is we've got to get our, we've got our rosemary already, it's all seasoned. Okay, now what we've got to do quickly is to just trim our asparagus. Now it's important to trim the bottoms off because sometimes they can get a little bit tough and dry. But well, it depends how, how young it is. Next thing, we have to preheat our pan. I've already got the oven on, okay, it's set to 130 degrees. Uh, yeah, normal fan oven. Now, this is where it's really important. We've got to turn this pan up. We've got to use a heavy pan as well. Come on. We've got to use a heavy pan. A heavy pan is important because it maintains the heat, okay? It holds it in like a radiator. Okay, if you use a, a, a really crappy thin pan, what happens is when you put the steak onto it, it basically <coughs> cools the pan down too quickly, but the heavy pan maintains the heat. Now what we do, we add a nice glug of olive oil, okay? Now, we're gonna leave this for about five minutes until it starts smoking. I think you need to tell people that that's not a dirty pan. Oh, no, no, no. This is a dirty pan. The reason why we don't wash the pan is because it leaves the flavours in. There's nothing wrong with... That's disgusting. It's not a dirty pan. It is. You're vile, mate. So, as you can see, the hot pan is now smoking quite a bit. And I've taken the... I don't see any smoke. I've taken the batteries out of the fire <laughs> alarm, so that's good. So, we're ready to go now. What we do... We're going to lay this in the pan 
Uh, I'm just going to get my, my tongs ready actually because yeah, it's going to be quite quick searing. Okay. It's going to be what? Quite a quick searing. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do, first of all, it's very quickly as well, we're going to get our garlic and we're going to just chop it right in half like that. Okay, so then we've got our garlic right there. We're going to put that in the pan. Boom. Ooh. Okay, we're going to chuck that in with our rosemary. Okay, and now our steak. Boom. Now we're going to push it down. It's pushing it. Now we're going to leave Push that on there real good. for probably about three minutes. Okay. So, Adam, can you just tell the camera in those three minutes, what, what would you tend to do? In three minutes, I'm going to be going over here and I'm going to be chopping up some bread to accompany my steak. He's chopping up the bread to accompany okay. his steak. Now what we do, chop it in lines like this. Mind your fingers. Okay. Perfect. We're going to put some butter on that as well. But first of all, what's most important, which most people don't do, but it's actually quite popular in Catalonia, is people get some um, garlic. What they actually do is they just rub it on the, the bread gently like that. It just gives the bread a little bit of a little bit of a flavour in, which most bread doesn't have. Sometimes people also cut a tomato as well and rub that on it. It sort of grates onto the onto the crust of the bread and. Uh, Again, adds a bit of a unique flavour. <laughs> so, this has now been cooking for about three minutes and it's time to flip. So what we do, we slightly peel it back a little bit and here we should see some nice brown... Oh, look at that. There we go. Now what we do, oh! then we turn it over, press it down. That's it. And leave that for another two, two to three minutes cooking in all them juices and what we do now as well also is going to apply a little bit of butter. <laughs> Boom. That's going to melt very very quickly. And then what we're going to do, that butter is going to Better. mix with all the flavours of that garlic and that rosemary. And we're going to spoon it on. You like a spoon? Huh? You like a spoon? Yeah. Here you we like go. the big spoon or the little spoon? I have no idea what he's doing. We're spooning the flavours onto the steak. All of these flavours the come out of the steak. And now, to stop the steak from drying out, they're going back in. I wonder if I can go here now. Put this. Okay, Lauren. <laughs> now. Lauren. <laughs> so what happens now is we turn it off the heat and we use our little gadget here which is a intra-meat thermometer. What we do, we find the thickest part of the steak and we put it in. It has to be away from the bone as well. So we put it in. There we go. We're in the middle of the steak now. And what we're aiming for is around about 120 degrees which is going to be medium. So, we're going to put this into the oven. <laughs> So, at the moment, the inside of the steak is actually 73 or 72.9 degrees Fahrenheit. We're actually aiming for, like I said, around about 120. 135 to 140 if you want it medium, uh, but we want it medium rare, so we're going to aim for about 120, 125. Okay. Now, when that reaches temperature, I have here a remote control and I set it to the desired temperature. And when it reaches that, I will get an alarm go off so that we don't overcook our steak. We will Hi continue. guys, I'm back. So, while we're waiting for the steak to reach temperature in the oven, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our service board. So I've already buttered my bread, I've already got my knife ready. And what I'm gonna do now, let's start off with this, we're gonna leave a nice little pinch of salt on the plate as well, okay? Now, if it was a normal evening, I would normally have scallops with this, but Waitrose didn't actually have any this evening, so I was quite disappointed. But, it is what it is. 
So what we'll do, we're just going to have a pile of salt and pepper to accompany the steak, along with our asparagus sideways. <laughs> now you can't have steak without anything but asparagus. Okay, so what we got, we've got a hot pan ready, we've got our oil here. <laughs> What we're going to do, I'm just going to get that in there. We're not going to need any butter. Uh, we're not going to boil this at all. Some people like to boil it before, uh, but I don't. So I'm just going to throw that in there and let it sizzle. Okay, get them all in a straight line, like soldiers. And let them sear off. What we might do, because we like it, don't we? We might put some, a little bit of salt on there. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, if you look at the steak, it's currently at 106 degrees. You get the right so we've got about five minutes left. Oh, seven. And what you we do, we keep turning this so that it doesn't burn. But if you look, the asparagus will actually turn greener the, the hotter it gets. Okay. The asparagus is always greener on the other side. Exactly. The asparagus is always greener when the steak is ribeye. Okay, right. So, are you going to be ready? Can I stop it then? No one can. Okay. So, we're just having a little bit of a tidy up right now. But, uh, if you have a look. The steak is at 119 degrees, so we're very nearly there at the desired very temperature. Very nearly there. Okay. Oh, oh, it's gone up. 120. Oh, oh, oh. So and if you look crazy. at the asparagus, it's perfectly cooked. Perfect. So a much, dark, a much uh, deeper dark green, which is perfect. So what we're going to do now, we're going to turn that heat off um, and transfer it to our serving plate. Here we go. Which is our chopping board. Which is our chopping board. This is where real men eat food. Right Where's off the real the man in this board. house? And here we go. Shut up. Now. You don't, you don't need to shout. Okay, you can stop now. Quick! Quick! <laughs> if you look, we're at temperature. It's surpassed 125 and we're at 128. So that means it's time to turn off the oven. Okay, and we take our steak out and we let the steak sit for 10 minutes. Woo! Look at this. Oh, it's very hot. Whew. Oh, look at that. So, we've still got the temperature gauge in. That currently at 130 sick. degrees. Okay. That's gross. Filming. I don't really want it. There's blood everywhere. Are you filming? Are you filming? Yes, I'm filming. Okay. So, what we do now, we're still going to keep spooning a little bit of the uh, juices on top. We're not going to let them go to waste. All of this flavour. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Look at that. All oh, of these juices. I'm definitely looking the other way right now because that is so gross. Oh my god, we've got a light bulb out. And what we're going to do, just quickly, we're going to transfer our garlic onto here. In fact, we might put it up there, we might not have room. So, we're just going to let the steak sit for about 10 minutes, relax. let the juices come to the surface, and just let it relax. Okay. So, guys, it's been about five minutes, okay? The steak has been sat here, and if you listen, you can hear the juices coming to the surface. Now, what we're going to do, like I said, it's only been five minutes, but we're going to leave it on our serving plate slash chopping board to rest for the remaining 10 minutes. I'm going to just drizzle a little bit oh, of the juices on just top. Just absolutely vile. Okay, there we go. That's it. Don't want it, don't want it too moist. And then what we do, while it's resting for five minutes, we're going to tidy up. Okay? Or Lauren will. So, the moment of truth. Now, you can tell how well your steak is done. By the blood seeping from it. Oh my god, that's what I am. It's perfect. Now, I like to enjoy my steak with a little bit of Cornish blue, a little bit of asparagus, a little bit of bread, 
seeded as well, and it has to be buttered, um, but also the butter has to be salted. And a little pile of pepper, and a little pile of salt, and half a garlic. Now, for the moment of truth, we'll cut into the steak. Lauren, would you please do the camera? Thank you very much. Are we ready? Oh, look at that colour. Oh my really god. That's perfect. Thank you very much, Lauren. Do you want me to take a video of you having your first bite? Oh, if you like. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> That's good.